Uh, Ken Yates is going to be giving a talk on the basics of free grace theology. I am jealous of his uh, graphics. Very nice. Uh, don't you think that's impressive? And this little tablet computer is impressive, too. So uh, if you're leaving, hasta luego. And if you're staying, uh, hasta here. What is it? What would you say? Welcome here in Spanish. I'm glad you're here. Bienvenidos. What does that mean? Welcome. Welcome. Okay, bienvenidos. Y Ken Yates. Oh, I don't need that. All right. Well, um, hey, I had no idea how many newbies we would have, or I know you guys all are newbies, but uh, uh, as I thought about this, I, I mentioned this before, I have no problem stealing other people's stuff, and uh, I stole some of Mike Lee's stuff, and so uh, I'm going to use some of his terminology. So I, that's right, I'm a scholar. I'm a scholar because I steal from a bunch of different people, right? Um, I did something like this uh, last year and I got yelled at because I didn't uh, have enough time for questions afterwards. So uh, I thought, well, we'll um, if I finish real early, we have lots of time for questions, that's great. Uh, so that's what we'll do. We'll just see how it goes. Uh, but we're going to talk about the basics of free grace theology, what's going on in the free grace uh, circles right now. Uh, that's kind of like where we're going. And so we'll see. And uh, I'm, I'm here for you all. And what's good is there's a lot of people in here that know more about it than I do. So if I need your help, if I say something stupid, say, hey, that's not right. Uh, just jump in. All right. A word of caution uh, about this. Uh, when we talk about uh, free grace theology and what people believe, and we're going to get into the wider free grace movement, uh, I'm going to have to obviously talk about other people's views, uh, and not everyone is going to agree with what I say. If I say, hey, uh, they believe this, they might say, well, I don't believe that. And uh, that may very well be true. Uh, if you have 10 theologians in a room, you're going to get 15 opinions. So uh, that's, that's a true statement. Uh, so if, if somebody says, hey, I don't believe that, he misrepresented it, then that's fine. But I do believe uh, that I'm doing the best I can to uh, state what generally the views are. And I'm, I'm not attacking anybody. I'm not dogging anybody. Um, uh, I'm just trying to say, generally speaking, this is the views as I see it. And again, if there's somebody here who says, hey, wait a second, I think you got this off a little bit, that's okay. Just jump right in here and, uh, and do that. Yeah, I'm the majority sect. Yeah, <laughs> so I, uh, but but you you know how it goes when you're talking theology. Someone will say, "Well, I don't believe that," you know. Say, "Well, okay, then what do you believe?" And that's fine. Um, and you'll see as we go through what I'm talking about. Um, what is free grace theology? Right here, uh, we're going to talk about uh, later that in free grace circles today. There's what we would call a wider free grace um, community. Um, what I mean here is free grace theology as uh, held by GES, because this is GES. Um, but you're going to see here at the end of this um, discussion that there are people who, um, who call themselves free grace, but who say, no, I don't agree with, with all of these things. Uh, but maybe we could say historically or the GES position, uh, this is free grace theology. Um, and again, there's people who call themselves free grace who don't believe this, but um, assurances are the essence of saving faith, Bob's uh, presentation. Uh, at the moment of faith, you have assurance, even if you lose it later. Ken, is mm -hmm. this a typo, leaving out the word of? 
the essence or of the essence, I think there is a difference. Yeah, of the essence of saving faith, of right? Yeah, right, right, right. Yes. Um, and assurance is based upon the promise of Christ, that he promises eternal life. Uh, that is why we have assurance. He promises us eternal life. We believe it. And if you believe what he promises, then you know you have eternal life because that's what he's promising you. Um, and saving faith is believing that Jesus is the Christ who gives eternal life that can never be lost. Again, historically, uh, when I started back in 1989 or 1990, when you talk about free grace, this is, this is what everyone said, hey, yeah, this is, this is what we go along with. Um, turning from sin uh, is not a necessary part of faith. Now, let me just say something. There are free grace people who say that repentance is not turning from sin, it's changing your mind. And so uh, you'll meet some free grace people who will say, um, yeah, I believe you have to repent in order to, be, uh, in order to receive eternal life. Well, what does that mean? It means changing your mind. Before I didn't believe, and now I believe. So it's a synonym for belief. Uh, I don't agree with that, but there are free grace people who've done that, uh, who believe that. Uh, that they believe repentance is another way of saying faith. Um, so, and so, for, for lack of a better word, the GES free grace or the historical free grace, this is uh, what, it, what it held. Um, some other things. Faith is being convinced that this is true. Um, Faith is, Jesus says, I give you eternal life. If you believe in me for it, you can never lose it. Faith is, I'm convinced that's true. Uh, um, historically, we're going to talk about this, uh, like lordship, salvation people, reform people, see faith as much more involved than that. There's, an, uh, there's, there's different parts of faith, intellect, emotional, will. Uh, faith is more than being convinced uh, something is true. And we'll talk more about that here in, in, in just a second. Um, when it comes to good works, free grace theology, GES, um, uh, who we say that good works have nothing to do with receiving eternal life. Good works uh, impact rewards, sanctification, and the avoidance of God's discipline. Um, so we, another way of saying that is free grace theology separates eternal life and sanctification or, uh, eternal life and discipleship. We, we, and Arminian theology and Lordship salvation, uh, mix those to, to various degrees. But we say, okay, works have nothing to do with eternal life. Works have everything to do with discipleship um, and, and rewards. Um, and based upon what we're going to talk about here later, historical free grace theology would say that an Arminian gospel, a Catholic church gospel, lordship salvation gospels do not save. That's, that's going to be important. So... If I'm an Arminian and I say this when I'm talking to an unbeliever, if you believe in Jesus Christ and continue in good works until you die, you'll make it into heaven. That is not a saving message. Okay? Or in order to be saved, you've got to give up everything to follow the Lord. You've got to make him Lord of your life. So if you're smoking, if you're drinking or whatever, you've got to give those things up. If you're not willing to give those things up, then you can't be saved. That is not a saving message. So in other words, if I say, if you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, you believe he rose from the dead, you believe he's coming back, you believe he's going to set up a kingdom, and now if you're willing to give up everything to follow him, then you'll be saved. That's not a saving message. Uh, same thing with the Catholic Church. If the Catholic Church uh, says... 
believe in Jesus Christ. He died on the cross. He's coming back. He was born of a virgin. A fat, like Bob was saying uh, uh, in the previous uh, session. You can believe a thousand things about him. But then, and then they say, okay, but then you got to get baptized in the church and you got to do this. That's not a saving message. Uh, now, notice my note. But that is not saying that there are no believers in the Catholic Church. There are believers in the Catholic Church. They believed at some time in the past, and they're Catholic, but they believe the message. You know, um, uh, John MacArthur, for example, even though I believe that the gospel he preaches is not a saving gospel, he says when he was younger, he believed the message of grace. Well, then he saved. Uh, so, I just want to make that note there on number seven. Um, but you're going to see there's free grace people today who strongly disagree with that. Um, and we'll talk about that here in a second. <clears throat> Arminian theology. Arminian theology is the theology that believes that eternal salvation can be lost. Uh, particularly when I started out, uh, Free grace discussions did not really interact much with Arminian theology. It was mainly discussions that involved Calvinism and lordship salvation and reformed theology. In fact, I forgot which book it is that Zane wrote, one of his books, Grace and... I can't remember which one it was, but he makes that statement. He says that basically the discussion here is not really directed so much toward those who hold Arminian theology... Um, although it could, although it could. Um, again, fr uh, free grace and GES arose mainly out of answering lordship salvation claims. Uh, and of course, there's the back and forth between MacArthur and Zane and his books, The Gospel According to Jesus, Absolutely Free. Um, that was mainly where most of the discussions were, were, were held. Um, Calvinism and his doctrines of perseverance of the saints and lack of assurance. And again, Bob talked about that as well. And again, when I was a young guy and I first started coming to GES, this is what the conferences were revolving around. Um, uh, perseverance of the saints, lack of assurance, um, and the discussions with mainly lordship salvation people. And we're going to talk about lordship salvation uh, theology next. <clears throat> Lordship salvation folks agree that eternal salvation cannot be lost. That's the difference between Arminian theology. Arminian theology says you can lose it. Lordship salvation, Calvinist people say you can't. But, for example, one of the points of Calvinism is if you have eternal salvation, then you're going to persevere in good works. Well, since you can't know whether you're going to persevere in good works till the end of your life, you can't know whether you're really saved or not. Therefore, assurance of salvation is not part of saving faith. And we talked about that in all of our briefings. The Lordship Salvation people say, as, as pretty much everyone has said so far, you can't know whether you're saved or not. You can be 80% sure, you can be 60% sure, you can be whatever percent sure. And a lot of free grace people would point out, if you're 80% sure, then you're not sure at all. Right? 80% eight, assurance is an oxymoron. If you say I'm 80% sure, then you're not sure. And, um, uh, and, Assurance cannot be obtained in this life. And I just want to say this is my opinion. I, I used to hear it said all the time, and I hear it now, that you can't be assured. That according to the Calvinist and the Lordship Salvation guy, you cannot be assured of salvation until you're on your deathbed. You say, okay, I've made it. I persevered. But I agree with what Bob said in the last session. Even then you wouldn't be sure. You know, even then, if I'm laying on my deathbed and I go, man, I, I'm a stud. I did pretty good here, you know. Uh, I've persevered. I've gone to church. 
But then I start thinking like R.C. Sproul. Well, wait a second. I love money. I love the applause of men. You know, I'm greedy, whatever, whatever sin. And I'm like, well, maybe I'm not really saved. So even then, you wouldn't have assurance. You have to wait till you get to the Lord, uh, before, in front of the Lord. Uh, Lordship salvation, true faith is manifested by good works. Uh, this is how you get your whatever level of assurance you can get. How many good works are you doing? You manifest it by good works. But as we've already pointed out, how many good works? How many good works? How long do I got to do this? That's why you can never have assurance in this life. Um, but they'll say that works play a major role in degrees of assurance. I was just watching a clip this past week of MacArthur in a he was being asked, a young guy was asking him, he said, um, basically, he said, are you assured of salvation? How, how can you be assured? And he says, well, it's by these works. We have relative assurance based upon how much works we do. Um, and obviously, Lordship Salvation, as the name applies, you've got to turn your life over to the Lord um, uh, in order to be eternally saved. You've got to repent from your sins. If you're not willing to repent from your sins, uh, then you really haven't believed. Uh, you can see how their definition of faith is completely different than being convinced something is true. You know, a free grace guy would say, I'm convinced that Jesus gives me eternal life as a free gift that I can never lose. I I'm convinced that's true. He promises that to me, and I believe it. But they're going to say, no, it's, it's much more involved than that. Uh, You've got to be willing to turn from your sin. You've got to make him Lord of your life. And so faith includes different aspects, uh, intellectual, emotional, and volitional. Uh, the volitional says, I'm, I'm going to decide to make him Lord of my life. And if I'm not willing to do that, then I, then I haven't really believed. Uh, the emotional part will, might include something like, I feel sorry for my sins. So faith includes some kind of repentant attitude that, yes, I recognize I'm a sinner. I, I, I feel bad about it, and uh, uh, I grieve over my sins or something. And they would say it also includes intellectual, that you understand what the offer is, but it also includes these other things. Um, and it's not being simply convinced that uh, something is true. Uh, now, this last one, I think, is kind of interesting. Uh, and this might be one of those areas where they might say, well, I don't really believe that. If you ask a Lordship Salvation guy, is the Arminian gospel a saving message? What is he going to say? My experience is that the vast majority of them are going to say, yes, he's absolutely saved. So the Lordship Salvation guy says, you cannot lose eternal life. Once you have it, it's yours. You can never know whether you have it or not, but if you have it, you can never lose it. The Arminian says you can lose it. So if you're, if you're an Arminian and you're preaching this gospel to an unbeliever and you say, hey, listen, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you'll go to heaven as long as you keep doing, doing good works because if you don't do good works, then you're going to go to hell because you lose your salvation. I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm being fair when I say that the Lordship Salvation guy would say, that's okay. That's a saving message. Um, and I, I said in my briefing, it's the same thing with the Catholic Church. Um, maybe not the most, but I think some of them would say that the Catholic who, like take, take for example, let's say you're a Catholic and you say, I believe that Jesus is God. I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, now, as long as I do the sacraments in the church, and as long as I go to confession, and maybe I'll spend 20 years in purgatory, and then I'll make it into the kingdom, I think there's a lot of Lordship Salvation guys who would say, yeah, that's, that's not right, but that's still a saving message. Whereas free grace people would say, no, that's a really messed up, gospel presentation that, that really is and so I, I i don't know if i'm being fair on the catholic part but 
I do, I'm, I'm real confident that I'm being fair on the Arminian part. Because you'll hear Lordship Salvation people say it all the time. My brother there, the Pentecostal, you know, Arminian, he's Arminian to the core. We can have a lot of fellowship and all that stuff. In fact, I would, I would, I want to take this a step further. And some of y'all may disagree with me on this. I don't think there's any difference between an Arminian and a Lordship um, uh, gospel. They're both saying the same thing. They're both saying if you don't have good works, you're going to go to hell. One just says you lose it, and one says you never had it. But it's, it's the same message. So it's not surprising to me that they would say that that other guy's preaching a saving message. And I told you about that conference I was in about the Catholic Church. It didn't surprise me that a lot of people in that room were saying the Catholic Church, even though it's messed up, preaches a saving message. Uh, I don't know what the percentage was, but... Um, mm -hmm. Okay, another thing about uh, free grace theology is that free grace theology emphasizes eternal rewards. Um, and we believe that there will be differences among believers in the kingdom of God. Uh, we also believe that there are some believers who are carnal and are disobedient, and they live that way for a long time, and they even die that way. Uh, but other believers are overcoming believers, and they're what we would call mature believers or victorious believers. Lordship salvation and Arminian theology disagree with that. And it's something that I know this is your experience as well. Rarely, if ever, do they mention rewards. And if you talk about rewards to a lordship or Arminian person, again, you might find an exception to this, and this might be one of those cases where they go, oh, no, I believe there's going to be rewards. But um, if you talk to a lordship salvation or Arminian theology person about rewards and differences in the kingdom, you're probably going to be told that's selfish. That's mercenary. Uh, and, they, and they may even say something to sound super spiritual. Rewards don't matter to me. All I do is just love the Lord. And uh, they, they don't matter to me. Uh, you know as well as I do, you'll meet people who have been in churches for 50 years. And you'll mention rewards to them. And they will say, I've never heard that. Never heard that one time. Um... And that, that makes sense because if you're a Lordship Salvation person or a, a person who believes in Arminian theology, you believe that everyone who gets into the kingdom of God is an overcoming, mature believer who perseveres in good works. So how can there be rewards? We're all going to be the same. Well, I won't because they'll say I'm not going to be there. But, uh, <laughs> but if everyone is a faithful believer who perseveres in good works to the end of their lives, how can you say there's going to be differences in the kingdom? How can you say there's going to be rewards? Uh, so this is another uh, distinctive of uh, free grace theology. <clears throat> Okay, as I've already said, uh, in GES, GES's early history, uh, and I just, maybe, maybe the first 20 years, maybe a little less than that, um, there was basically a unity among free grace folks in combating or, what's a better word, um, contending with... Uh, debating with uh, Lordship Salvation. You know, a guy like me who had just graduated from seminary a few years ago would be like, well, what did your, what, how did your professors deal with this passage in, in, uh, at DTS? And we discuss it. And go, oh, well, he's a Calvinist, Lordship. And these were the kind of issues that um, we debated and contended and discussed um, in the early history. What's your start year? For me? I started, yeah, like Bob started in 86, right? 86, and I came along in 89 or 90, so, and, um, yeah, you know, so, 
and I had Zane Hodges for the first two years I was in seminary and stuff and uh, so yeah but there was a split within the free grace circles into two camps and here I'm stealing uh, Mike Lee's terminology Bob said he has a different terminology. I don't remember what it was. What was it? Exclusive and inclusive. There you go. That's good. Um, and Bob Bryant's um, 2006 Revisited is going to bring up some of these issues. There was a split in the free grace circle to where we could call it a wider free grace circle, or there are those who are called flexible and there are those who are called focused. And whatever term you want to use, um, so I want to talk about that history here because it's, uh, it's what we see today. Um, what do all these uh, folks have in common? Whether they're flecked, now I'm talking about the wider free grace community. Um, they all believe that eternal life cannot be lost. They all believe that uh, we can have uh, assurance of salvation. That assurance of salvation is a biblical concept. That a believer should have assurance. And they can have assurance. Uh, all free grace guys, whether they're flexible or uh, focused, believe there's going to be rewards in the kingdom. They believe that uh, believers can be carnal and fail miserably and even apostatize. That's something I didn't mention. Free grace uh, from the very beginning says that a believer can even deny the faith. And of course, a lordship salvation guy and an Arminian guy would say that's impossible, that that cannot happen. Um, many believers uh, will not persevere to the end. There's going to be believers who die carnally. Uh, and both focused and, and uh, flexible free grace people believe that the Lordship Salvation folks mess up the scriptures. They misinterpret those pa many, many passages. Uh, and all the free grace people will say that you don't have to make Jesus Lord of your life in order to be saved. So they hold those things in common. But there are many differences, uh, many differences. When it comes to the flexible free grace proponents, and this is something that's been uh, emphasized in the three plenary sessions today, they say assurance is not of the essence <laughs> of saving faith. In other words, they would say that you do not have to have assurance at the moment of faith in order to be saved. Now, this is the flexible free grace people. Um, you do not have to believe that Jesus gives you eternal life. It's optional. It's true he does, they say, and it's great if you believe that, but it's not necessary. In my, in my uh, session about the forgiveness of sins, for example, they would say, if you believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead and he forgave you of your sins, you have eternal life, even if you don't know it, even if you don't believe it. Um, and what they believe then is, remember I told you that free grace, historically, we kept salvation and sanctification separate. They believe that eternal security and the assurance of salvation is a sanctification issue. In other words, you can believe an Arminian gospel and be saved, and then later you can learn about assurance and eternal security and have joy and, and praise the Lord because now you, you know the truth. But you were saved before. This is something you can learn later. It's a Christian growth thing. It's a sanctification issue. And you'll hear this too. Eternal life is the result of believing in Jesus, not the object. Let me explain that. What that means is, let's say I believe in an Arminian gospel. I believe I can lose my salvation. But when I believed in Jesus, 
the result of that was I received eternal life. It was not, that's not what I had to believe. I didn't have to, the object was not believing in him for eternal life. It was something that I received after I believed in Jesus, for example, of forgiveness of my sins. I believe in Jesus for the forgiveness of my sins. The result is he gives me eternal life, even though I didn't believe in that. And there are many different gospel presentations. When you hear flexible free grace people talk, they'll say, for example, you can believe that Jesus was sent from God and that'll save you. If you remember my presentation, I said you got to believe in something. Uh, you might believe that Christ is coming again or that Christ died on the cross for your sins. Of course, the Arminian believes that. The Catholic believes that. And so they can be saved by believing in that. Um, just this past week, I heard one say, you're saved if you fear God and ask him for mercy. And I tried to think, where do they get that from? And then I realized, remember the publican? God, be merciful to me, I'm a sinner. That's a saving message for at least some of the flexible, free grace people. Um, and you might say, well, what does that guy mean when he says, God, be merciful to me, I'm a sinner? Uh, again, like a Catholic would say that, or Arminian would say that, God, be merciful to me, and I, I swear I'll clean up my life, and I'll, uh, I'll quit smoking, I'll, I'll do all these things, and uh, I'll, you know, just be merciful to me. You know, give me a clean slate, and, and, I'll, and I promise I'll do better. Um, that could be a saving message. And here's an important one. The free grace flexible people say that the Lordship salvation and the Arminian gospel are saving messages. And um, I think Bob Wilkin said this best a long time ago. He said, early in the free grace movement, the, dis the distinction there was not seen. They did not see that as a gospel message. They saw that as a sanctification issue. Uh, so uh, with the flexible free grace people, they say the Lordship Salvation people, they're saved, even if that's only the message they've heard. They've only believed in a Lordship Salvation message or an Arminian message, they're still saved. They just need to learn now that they they can have assurance that they can that they can uh, know that they're saved. They don't know it now, but but they are. <laughs> they have eternal life, even though they don't know they have eternal life. Um, and again, the Catholic Church. I told you about my my uh, experience there. Uh, now these flexible free grace people would say all these gospels ha are wrong. They're twisted. They're not exactly biblical but they're still able to save. Um, now, some would also add that you have to believe in the deity of Christ, death, burial, and resurrection of Christ as well. It's not enough to believe just in eternal life. You need to believe in these other things. Um, and this last one is very interesting to me, and I've heard them say this before when talking to them. They say in some context, this is a flexible free grace guy, in some context they say it is best not to bring up eternal security and not to bring up assurance of salvation. If you're in a place that does not believe in eternal security, you will only offend people. So don't bring it up. Just simply say, believe in Jesus and he'll forgive you of your sins. Don't even bring up the promise of eternal life. Um, and the reason that hits me is because, as I mentioned, I, I go overseas a lot and when I go overseas, man, you don't meet anybody who believes in eternal security. And so they would say, when you go to places like that, don't even discuss it. Don't even, don't even bring it up. Uh, they can learn it later. Um, when it comes to faith, I'm going to be honest with you. Maybe Bob can help me out on this or some of you other people can help me out. I'm very confused about what flexible free grace people say about faith. Uh, when I read it, it's, 
it's very convoluted to me, and, and I'm from Kentucky, and I'm not that smart, and maybe that's the reason. Um, um, but you'll hear them say that it's, it's oftentimes, it's more than being convinced that something is true. And you'll hear them say it involves an act of the will, such as asking him to be your savior. Uh, now, not all of them. You'll hear different things in here. And they'll say it also involves trust. I heard one word it like this. He goes, faith is more than being convinced that something is true, but I don't know how much more it is. <laughs> and that's kind of what I get when I'm listening to it. I'm like, I don't know what you mean either. Um, um, you'll hear him talk, for example, about it being a personal reliance upon Christ. And I think what they mean is something like this, because on this last one, it includes repentance, which is a, at least a desire to change your life or acknowledge your sin, or a desire to change your moral life. Now, now notice the difference between lordship and salvation here. They're not saying you've got to make Jesus Lord of your life, but they say you've got to have a desire to do so. And this is what they mean by some kind of personal reliance upon Christ, that you're, you're relying upon him to change you. And so that is included in faith. Again, I'm, I'm confused by this, and I think the reason why is I think there's a lot of different views among flexible free grace people about what faith involves. You might hear them say, for example, or at least I do, you got to acknowledge your sin. You, you got to have some kind of realization that you're a sinner. And before, in, in free grace circles, you didn't hear that. You, you'd hear things like, most people who come to faith understand they're a sinner, but that's not what faith means. Faith means being convinced that Jesus gives you eternal life. These guys are saying, no, there's some element of these things in faith. It's, it's more than simply understanding that Jesus offers you eternal life and you being convinced it is true. Okay, I want to summarize. At first, it was very easy to differentiate between free grace and lordship salvation and Calvinism, but um, today there's people who carry the free grace label who believe in different things. It's, it's a lot harder to, um, to differentiate. Uh, one of the questions earlier was, I forgot what session it was, is, was involved in that. Can we, should we use this term free grace theology or is it confusing? And you can see why it is. Um, focus free grace says the saving message is being confessed that Jesus Christ gives eternal life that can never be lost. By definition, when you believe, you have assurance. It is of the essence of saving faith. Um, and these things are not sanctification issues. In other words, if, if you don't, at the moment of faith, know you have eternal life, then you have not understood the offer. You haven't understood what Jesus is promising. Those are not something that you learn later as a sanctification issue. And the Gospels that involve works and do not, give, or do not offer assurance that are conditional, they are not saving messages. All right. Any questions? All right. Uh, yeah, you, I guess you want to take verbal or send them in? Whatever they want, whatever y'all think. Whatever y'all do. Hmm. Verbal. Sure. Okay, if it's verbal, I'll repeat it. Go ahead. Okay. A lot of people on the free grace side um, also believe that the ability to believe is a gift from God. In other words, the faith to believe is the gift. That we're dead in sin and we have no ability to believe the gospel. So is that still a free grace issue or is it strictly Calvinism? They repeat it. Okay, uh, the question is, uh, if, if, make sure I get it right. Um, when it comes to faith, even free grace people, some would say that faith is given to you as a gift. You're not able to believe this. 
Here's how I would respond to that, and Bob may, he's been here with it longer than I have. Here's how I would say that the free grace people who hold that position would say it. They might say that, um, yes, God gives faith, but at the same time we have the free will to believe, and it's something we cannot understand, we can't comprehend. Uh, so yes, you will meet free grace people who say that faith is a gift, um, but at the same time, it's a mystery. We, the scriptures tell us we have the ability to believe. Uh, but I, I would say that most free grace people would say they would question the first part of that uh, about it being a gift. I think most free grace people would say that the gift there is not faith in Ephesians 2. It is the... Uh, the the grace the salvation by grace message right right yeah but but you're right that you will meet some free grace people who will say that faith is given to us by God uh, election I believe in election but at the same time I believe I have the free will but I don't understand how those things work okay and just as an aside because we've had good attendance for this session and since we have this room anyway and since you know, not everybody's going to swim. <laughs> uh, the next two days, we're going to use this time, 4.15 to 5, or a little bit after 5, for question and answer and interaction. So Ken and I and maybe a few of the other speakers will be here. So that would be a general Q&A, not just for what he spoke on here, but general. Okay, yeah, Mr. Kim. <laughs> I, um, what oh, he's got a mic for you. Oh, thank you. What was the prevailing theological view in the Western Church before Lordship Salvation? Before Lordship Salvation? Yeah, uh, date-wise, yeah. Oh, well, boy, boy ch ch too bad Bob ain't here, right, with his dissertation. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. That 1647 that he gave uh, when the Westminster Divines... Yeah, I... I would say, you tell me what you think, I would say the prevailing view would have been Arminian. Yeah, I mean, you had the Western Church, which was Roman Catholic. You had the yeah. Eastern Church, which was Eastern Orthodox. And they both, I mean, we could call it Arminian Lordship Salvation, or we could call it straight up faith plus work salvation. Right. You know, I mean, within Catholicism, there's seven sacraments, right? And you've got to follow through, including last rites. Yeah, we got a question back there. But From at the same time, we would say that free grace theology was always there. Yeah, there were people. We just don't know who they were. Right. And Jeff uh, Stevens, from where are y'all? In Wyoming or Montana or something? He's out there. Idaho. He, he's out there trout fishing Idaho, or somewhere. Idaho. He's right. One of the, you know, that's one of the top ten states in the United States. Because it yeah. touches the Canadian border. Okay, I'm sorry. And, and by the way, to go to to go to that go to that question too. As I said on the briefing, even though even if Arminian theology was by far uh, dominant, there were many Arminians who had believed in the message of grace sometime in their life and right. had believed. Right. Hmm. Yeah. Um, why is this so important? What important? The relevance of getting the gospel right. For the church. For the church? Yeah. Oh, I, I, yeah. Well, I think it means everything. I, I, I know you're, you're messing with me. Uh, well, no, 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 no. I'm just saying for, for new people. It, sure, it, sure. You know, it just seems like, well, we're just arguing about salvation yeah. or whatever. And why is it so much deeper than that? Yeah, folks, and I know a lot of y'all know it, and, and, and Jeff, and Jeff does too, and uh, it is, you can't understand the scriptures if you don't get this. I mean, this is this impacts everything. Uh, I mean, all these passages on rewards, uh, and and you know, as pastors and people who work in churches, our churches are filled with people who have no assurance. They lack assurance, and um, you're going to. What I love for me in the free grace movement when I first got started was to see how all those passages just made sense. You know, you come to the GES conference and you're like, 
oh, that's what that passage means, you know, because of free grace theology, and you see that this is talking about a sanctification issue, not an eternal life issue, and just on and on and on. And um, so, yes, it just, it, plus, if, if the focused free grace position is correct, and it is, then we need to give to people the message that saves them. Yeah. You know, there's so many people who have never heard it, and, uh, and we need to tell them that. Yeah, and the other thing is just from a purely practical standpoint, I know we're preaching to the choir here, once someone grasps this, it's life transforming. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get this, you want to tell other people. Mm -hmm. You got the other message, who wants to tell them that? It's, it's a, a downer message. But this message you want to tell people, and you want to live for this message, you want to die for this message. So uh, to me, uh, it's everything about the church, you know, and it's kind of the opposite of what happens in Lordship Salvation Churches. In Lordship Salvation Churches, they try to get everybody to doubt their salvation <laughs> because they think it's good for them. Right. Right? In our churches, we try to get everybody to be assured of their salvation because we think that's good for them. <laughs> it's interesting. We got some people on the uh, Zoom from Europe, and uh, we have Zoom classes with them. And uh, it's, it's, when you hear them talk, it says, there's no free grace churches over here. And, 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 you, and they just talk about when they hear this truth and they see these things and they're reading these things, they say, wow, this just changes everything. And to them, it's just so crystal. It's just like hits them in the face. So There is a question. Um, when, oh, I got to go back up. Where was it? How do flexible free grace people define a false conversion? How do flexible, free grace people define a false conversion? Uh, I, I think there's going to be differences of opinions in there. You yeah. know, for example, there's some in the flexible, free grace who would say, you know, you got to believe these other things like the deity of Christ. It's like if you never believed that or you didn't understand that, then you're not saved. But I also would think that the way they redefine faith, some of them would say, well, you didn't have that emotional aspect of it, or you didn't have that personal reliance or that trust. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think that they would, um, depending on which one you're talking about. Yeah, and there's one uh, who's written a book, and he basically says there's almost no false professions. I mean, his view is if you believe in the deity, death, and resurrection of Jesus then you're born again, which is well over 90% of the 2.4 billion professing Christians. I think the only people he would exclude would be cults, which he doesn't indicate in the book whether he excludes the cults, and extreme liberals who don't believe in life after death or the deity, death, and resurrection of Jesus. But that's a teeny percentage of the 2.4 billion people who call themselves Christians. So there are some that would be almost no false professors, and then the others, you're right. It would be a whole spectrum. A whole spectrum, yeah. yeah. Um, so before I uh, uh, get to the comment, I, I did want to say that I, I had no excitement at all about evangelism until I understood grace. <laughs> when I got that gospel, all of a sudden it was exciting and I knew how to evangelize. Um, but I want to say with people that I've spoken to uh, in regards to, I guess you would consider them uh, flexible, uh, free grace, is it seems like, they may be confusing their path to belief with the required path because maybe that was what they believed before they believed in eternal life, and then they think that that has to be the same for everybody. So it's not that those things can't lead you to that moment of faith in Christ. It's that they're not the requirements. That everybody doesn't stay in the same path to that. That's a great point. The, uh, well, the question was some of these flexible free grace guys, uh, are they reflecting upon their own history. And you're right. You will hear them say, I was saved before I had assurance. You'll hear them say that a lot. You know, like, assurance is not of the essence of saving faith because look at me. I was saved before I, I knew that I had eternal life. And so, yes, that is a common. And, and yeah, I think you probably are hitting on something there that I'm allowing my experience to determine my theology. Yeah, uh, I've yeah. seen that with a number of people, I, I think Trent's right, and 
sometimes they will come right out and say, this is the proof, right? This is how I know you don't have to believe in the promise of eternal life because Change the life. Yeah, yeah, they will actually. I met with one of the key leaders, and he told me, he said, my life radically changed when I gave my life to Christ. I can't remember if he said gave my life to Christ or received Christ or invited him in. He's since given a testimony that I think Mike Lee's going to be talking a little bit about it, where he talks about, you know, being in a situation where he kind of just cried out and said, Jesus, if you exist, help me or save me, but he wasn't talking about salvation from hell. He was talking about salvation from problems he had in life, and that's his testimony. And a lot of those guys do that, but yeah, hang on one sec. We, we've also, yeah, go ahead. Oh, so after I see all the Bill. differences between the focused and the uh, flexible, what makes the flexible free grace people free grace. I don't see free grace at all. Why are they, why are they under the umbrella of free grace? I'm sorry, we're out of time, but great question there. Are you yeah. being socially, are you being politically correct to call people free grace flexible? Do they call themselves free grace? That, that, that's a great question. That's a great question. What what label should we, what, what label should we give somebody? Can, the question is, the, the, the differences of the flexible free grace, can we really call them free grace? Yeah, and, and that's a good question. I'm not talking for, for Bob, I'm talking for Ken here. I, he's the jefe. I would say, I would say no, but they call that label for themselves. And, but I would say, no, that's not free grace then, you know? And maybe I'm just the old guy who says, get off my lawn, you know, and all that other stuff. But. That, that would be my view. I, uh, so, yeah. I, I, I wish there was another label to give it. A, yeah. 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 Since this is uh, basics of free grace, when I first was made aware of the, the, the theology back in uh, 1986, GES was the only free grace organization that I was aware of. Mm -hmm. As far as I know now, there are three. And can you go into some of the differences? And this may be a Bob question rather than, than you, Ken, that, that caused the splits and the schisms? Because they all came out of GES, is my understanding. Yeah, well, that's Bob Bryan's talk tomorrow to some degree. And Mike Lee, you're going to be talking about that too, aren't you? So that's both of theirs. But I would say there's way more than three. I mean, there's two organizations, uh, you know, that have Free Grace in their name. There's a school that has called Free Grace Seminary. There's another school called Grace School of Theology. There's a group in Duluth, Minnesota, that has a network of churches that they're kind of together. Um, and... Uh, J.B. Hickson is involved with that group, and he gave a talk why I no longer call myself Free Grace. Yeah, he even said it, yeah. <laughs> and he threw everybody under the bus. <laughs> he threw GES under the bus and the other Free Grace organizations under the bus and the school under the bus, because I guess he, he used to be the executive director of one of the other Free Grace organizations, and he used to work at Grace School of Theology, and he said, they're all bad. <laughs> and so it's funny, but there are different groups, and I think we'll get into that more. Uh, but the thing about it is there's big differences of opinion between these groups. I mean, the Duluth group is radically different than these other people. They were involved with the FGA for a while, and then they left. And so there's some, some radical differences, but I would agree with what Ken had up there. They all agree assurance is not of the essence of saving faith. And the other thing, you had a, maybe you could go back to that. You had a whole list of things. The things they agree on or the things they don't agree on? Yeah, things that, that they disagree with us on. The next one, slide. Uh, is it after that? Go the direction. Two Keep going. Three. Many differences? There it is. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. That slide. And by the way, if you want to, if you want to get all these slides, Mike put up a QR code, and it's on the back there, right? And it's also outside. And it, Ken, if you will give Mike your PowerPoints, people don't have to take pictures of them. Oh, no, no, I, I, want, I, want, I got a bone with pick. I, I sent in my slides on my plenary. You said only you and one I other person. 
Yeah, we're good. Okay, good. Okay, so you'll be getting. He, so if you go to there, you'll get all of them. <laughs> My slate is clean. Okay. Yeah, okay. Tom's <laughs> got a question. You got yeah. zero seconds left, so make it right. a short question. Yeah. yeah, I saw one slide where you had in one bullet point uh, some believers are overcomers, and then another bullet point further down, all believers are overcomers. Oh, uh, did I did I do something wrong? Here? No, I do not think so. I think I misunderstood what I was there looking at because you were talking about some. Yeah. I think I think the Duluth group says all believers are overcome. Oh, do they? I think so. Oh, wow. They See? have a book where they were on the outer darkness. Oh, they're saying Re Revelation 2 and 3, that yeah. those are all believers? Yeah. Now, would they say that all persevere to the end? No, no, no. They yeah. just say that overcoming is believing. Yeah. My view, when I, when I use the word overcomer, I'm not using it like Revelation 2 and 3. I'm using it like like the Lordship salvation, all believers are going to persevere to the end. And I don't think any people who call themselves free grace would say that, right? That all true believers will persevere I to the end. So. Yeah. yeah. Like all right. Final, final question. Uh, so what is the relational conclusion from all this, from a focused free grace perspective? Um, are Calvinists and Arminians our brothers? Are we to break fellowship with them? Are they heretics? <laughs> Boy. Very good. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'll speak for me. I I cannot um, just me. I um, I cannot attend a church where that message is being preached, it, uh, and it doesn't make me any holier than anybody. It's just like literally scratching fingernails on a chalkboard. I just I just can't. So I tell people that if all. I tell them not to attend a church like that, an Arminian church, Lordship Salvation Church. I wouldn't attend one. You know. Knock the dust off your sandals. Though. What's that? Knock the dust off your sandals. Knock your sandals and go on. Yeah, I just, yeah, it's and it's and again, I think for me, it's just it's just irritating to hear that. You know, it's just uh, like on my sessions when I was talking about that sermon. Uh, Jesus will forgive you of your sins and you're saved forever. And you say, hallelujah. And then literally the next word, but, you know, if you don't do this, you don't do this, don't do this, you'll give it back to him. I just, I just can't handle that. So, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.